Yo, hello. Man, I'm running a bit slow today. How you guys doing? Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Prince, what's up? Angelina, yo. BTVR, Jasper, Fatal, Raggedy. Do Raggedy with the first, too. Oh, no camera. What? Wait, what does that even mean? Hang on here. Is it going to be one of those days? Hey, there we go. Oh my gosh. Castle, what's up? Sarika, yo. Yeah, I was taking a, uh, I was taking a nap. It was nice. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's time. Let's go. I think I get my monitors tomorrow. I'm so excited. We'll see. We'll see. That'd be, uh, Quite impressive considering I ordered them yesterday. Davey, what's up? How you doing? Hey Rex, thanks for the resub. Dude, 15 months as well. Wild. Wild. Uh, let me see here. All right, we got some posts already. Pretty good, pretty good, nice. Well, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can jump into this, huh? Oh, I see some cool, I see some cool posts from you guys. Okay, just gonna open these up. Oh, did I just double open some? Okay, yes, I did. Cool. Um, Alex G, if you've got... You're getting promoted to, to first screen tonight. What? Yo, let's go. Um, such a cool critique. has got to pay a lot of attention. Tobias, what's up, man? How you doing? I was looking at your scene as well, uh, to be honest. It's pretty cool. It's looking good, dude. I need to uh, give you some feedback on it. Uh, out of curiosity, if we want a critique from you, what should we post? Where should we post our portfolios? I'm already in the Discord server. So there's an announcements channel, and I posted a link to stream critiques. Uh, during stream critiques, we only look at uh, single posts. So if you want to have a critique, we'll just look at like one piece um and then from there like portfolio reviews are a separate uh separate review jasmine yo what's up luan hello kaz what's up uh alex what i was going to ask is if you've got uh references for your piece i'd love to have them in here one piece one piece one piece yes <laughs> see now cool 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 okay let's uh let's let's dive in here oh man rex you got a hell of photos too let's uh open all those up we got a video at the end there okay so let's start with the reference from uh angelina let's switch over to this there we go uh so this is the reference you're going off of number one i'm on blockout stage what do you think about proportion so far uh, let me switch the okay.
Okay, so here's your block out proportions. Let's let's see if we can get this get this in here. Uh, other one, copy image. I don't know if this is how you're checking, but I like to, to check like this. If you're trying to go for like really precise, um, so there's definitely like, what I would say is like, maybe the length of the structure, this length here would be good to, to maybe make a little bit longer. Yeah. The, the FOV is pretty huge. I would, um, I would look at the spacing between elements. So like if we scroll in here, so you can see like where the doorway is and how this is inset and there's a little bit of a wall piece here. So this length uh, and then the inset, you'll it'll help you understand what the inset is here. And then you can measure the distance between like with, I guess with your eyes, right? Just the, where the window is versus the edge of the, of the wall there. I mean, there's, there's definitely some, it's not, you can't go one for one for sure be, just because of the, because of how it's set up. I mean, the building isn't, like if we just match it to the stairs a little bit more, I think make sure to get that, that curved shape in the, in the stair. Like even for a block out, I think the, your block out's quite good in that it's looking at the primary elements that are that are present in the piece, just figuring out like where all of those elements need to be and lengthening the, the piece to, to match it accordingly is going to be, it's going to be good. You can see like back here, this, this feels a lot more substantial than in your block out. I think extending it a little bit and giving this a little bit more, um, weight. I know you, the, the FOV is definitely in the concept is, is screwing with us a bit. Um, but just pay attention to those elements and trust your trust your eye when it comes to the height of stuff. Like the the height of this, like I'm guessing you counted the stair height. Um, and there's all types of weird stuff going on here. Like where's the wall that this is on? Concepts can be funny like that. Um, but yeah, I would. I would say looking, looking at where the windows are at and how a person's supposed to view the view the like look out through the window. Those windows probably need to be a bit lower, and then the length of the structure, and then looking at the scale and substantial. Uh, what is the word for that? I want to say substantialness, <laughs> but that's not that's not right. Just looking at the scale of this, trying to push that a little bit more, um, and yeah. I would, I would extrapolate a list of all the little small props that you're seeing and create like a list that is really reusable, like all these little pots and stuff and just block those out. Like there's a little container here as well. There's like a, like a barrel here also. Maybe these can be the same. So you extrapolate that list, block all of them out and then reuse the hell out of them to get the same kind of feeling and density so that you're not having to recreate or create a bunch of uh, duplicate props or like props that are slightly different from each other. I don't know if you're, yeah. So you're looking at this one as well, man, there's some weird, the way the concepts kind of set up is really kind of wild. So don't, don't trust it too much on length and stuff like that, but just try and match the feeling you're getting right now. This feels very square. Like lines are really straight. So you're going to want to watch out for, for those. Um, those you can soften up and just the way that you're dealing with the geometry as you go, you might want to play with the, uh, the lens being a little skewed as well. A bit, a, a bit of a fisheye will get you a little bit closer to that. And it'll also like naturally get you away from the, um, the feeling that of something being just 3d, if you know what I mean.
Uh, but yeah, what was the other point you had here? What kind of house is this? Monastery of some kind? I actually, I'm not sure. I want to say it's a home. But there's a bell here, so it's it's actually nondescript what this could be. It could be like a home for like a bunch of people. Because this looks like there's some type of stable situation going on here. Maybe a kitchen in the back inside of this. So this is all connected inside. Maybe you go in here and that connects to the kitchen. And then there's like dual two or three floors in here and maybe even a basement that connects everything together. It does feel a little bit like a city center just because of like how this all connects. And there's some type of board here which might be leading to something. But it might be worth seeing what the the concept the concepts needs were. Because it looks like it's trying to answer a lot of things and not specifically like what is this building. Um, do I need to build full landscape for this scene? No, you could do the landscape like this. I would suggest trying to like create um, a terrain piece for maybe like this spot here. And then like this can be geometry. Or you can, you know, you can do a combination of, of the two. Uh, this could probably be geometry too, and you can use displacement if you if you want to use the nanite like mesh displacement. But this, I would probably try and do it with terrain or like patches of of high density meshes that you're like blending together. I think it depends how far you want to go with the uh, realism. And any general tips on how to approach this kind of environment? Um, I think the way you're approaching it is how you should approach every. Crew, hey, J. Crew, thank you for the for the sub, catching the train. I love it. Jordan, thank you as well. Um, but yeah, it's um I think the phases that you're going through where you block it out and then you're like, I would block out everything that you think you're gonna need. Like if you if you think you're gonna need like this this cloth thing, block it out. Block out all the wood pieces in like a simple form just to know that they're there. Block out this mesh. Um, the wheel, a barrel, place all of those, like some planter thing that you can place on the side. Um, otherwise, the only other thing I would say is just make sure that you're not um, bringing in all the pieces like merged together and try and construct the space uh, inside of Unreal. It's also okay if your foliage is block out meshes or volumes. Dude, this concept's really cool though. Yeah. But yeah, uh, hopefully that answers all all the stuff you're you're asking about though. Like I would like this whole step area. I would probably take this bottom part make it its own piece and then make make the stairs their own piece and this wall thing its own piece just like this is its own like just create this on its own so that you can because the the more you can move things around and make them a little bit more organic the more natural it'll start to feel which is a, a huge win uh, when it comes to trying to get away from that 3d look but yeah that's uh the block outs looking good it's just trying to get away from the, the straightness of it uh, as you continue forward. Not necessarily in the block out. Just something to keep in mind. Cool. Okay, Nick, you're next, sir. So you finished your piece. Uh, you were looking for some feedback. Love some feedback on how to make my prop better so that I can do better in the future. So, I mean, generally it looks, it looks pretty good. There's some... Some stuff I can highlight for you. The the clay render looks really nice. The way... So the way this is being presented, uh, so the render itself is really cool. The material spheres and, like, what you're doing there, I'm actually thrown off by it. Like, I, I 
because there's this spherical shape here, your brain goes, oh, is this like a, a extension of it or is it connected to it somehow? And then you realize, oh, it's a material. I think presenting it less as like a presentational, I would like separate the pieces and maybe like do these on the side in a more of a breakdown way instead of trying to make it look like um, a, a beauty render. It's more of a technical render, right? It can still look nice like this, but maybe like straightening it out, separating the the wood piece and like highlighting how you how you did that with a brush, or like what brushes you were using for that. Um, the wireframe's a bit hard to read against the material, and especially in this one, you have you have like a light wireframe on here as well. So maybe like either making this one, I think if you just made the wireframe on this darker. And maybe not triangulated, that would help a lot. Um, yeah. So if we go up up to these renders, like these are generally okay. The chain, I'm not really a fan of the chain being so uh, stiff, making it look a little bit more organic or like relaxed with gravity would, would help. And specifically in this top render, it feels like the environment that you're reflecting is actually quite dark. So because this is all metal, it's very difficult to read the elements because the, the darkest points are very close, if not darker than the background, which leads me to like, it feels like your environment should be a, a brighter environment in the reflection. That way you can really appreciate the metal. Um, the metal might be a bit too reflective for realism, but I don't know, like, is there a reference in here somewhere? Because I'd be curious to see. Did you do a displacement as well? I would have displaced this maybe. You can drop the reference in the stream. Okay. Yeah, let's let's take a let's take a gander. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if we, if we look at this reference, you can see how clear it is to read everything. And it's because like, it's almost grayish here. And that's because it's reflecting a white environment. Now, when you look at yours, it feels like yours is ref reflecting just some like really soft uh, spotlights and a black environment. So it's like studio lighting. I think to, to bring it more in line with trying to look real is to just get an environment reflecting around it uh, that, that it can reflect with. Um, maybe the roughness could be a little bit rougher. I think it would depend once you get the environment reflecting. But yeah, this, this really feels like it needs to relax um, with, the, with the final presentation. Like this should be hanging here. Otherwise, a lot of the micro details look really good. Like, really nice. Maybe there's some aging could be happening on the wood. Let me see what the... Yeah, just some of the... You see how much much darker here from, like, constant grip or, like, being used or held? And then the cracks are quite dark. And you don't really have much of the, the darker cracks in there, so there's not a lot of um, extra character being added to the surfaces. Um... That being said, I mean, the execution of the high poly is good, and it's I think it's more coming down to the execution of your materials and your understanding of PBR to get uh, the materials to sing. But yeah, that feels like it was a mouthful. Hopefully that was that was helpful. Oh, Madhu, it's okay, buddy. Uh, next up is Frederick. Let's see here. So we've got, you started blocking out your garage. So you ended up going with the garage scene. Here's a block out. Here's the block out I'm at right now. Since there's no concept art, I'd like, I'd love to get some feedback on composition and maybe where to push block out further before going into making assets. 
Um, if you haven't done it yet, I would bring a character in here and uh, just make sure that concept wise or like scale wise, everything's feeling pretty good. This is quite interesting with a stair set like this. I don't know if that would, if that's normally like that. I'd find references for how stuff is stored above. You have multiple mannequins. That's good. Um, it does feel like the space around is still a little empty. Like you've got this propping here, but maybe around this, this pillar, you would expect maybe like a toolbox. I guess it's all over here. There's something happening here as well. And I think I would expect some type of, uh, lighting to be showing this area slightly, right? You've got some lights up here. I think even at this phase, I'd like to see. Uh, how much those lights are contributing to the scene. Right now, they don't feel like they're doing anything, right? Uh, you're relying primarily on uh, the light coming in from the garage itself or from outside. So if we're looking at composition and like the feeling of the space, th right now these are quite straight. I would tilt them as if they're naturally placed even though it's block out because it helps with like figuring out where these are pointing. Like I would expect this one to be more here. That way they're both pointing inwards like this right now. They're pointing in, in a very, um, unnatural way. Like they're, they're placed like one was taken and then it was duplicated and moved to the side. Whereas like it should feel like someone placed them down and naturally they've kind of just wiggled around and followed like, the weight of the, the cables to, to get them in the places they're supposed to be. Um, yeah, it feels like something's supposed to be here. This feels a little strange to me, like the thickness and, and all of that. I think I would really lean on references of a real garage or ways of storing stuff in a garage like setting. And, um, there's a pallet here. Okay. There's a cart here, maybe some smaller props on there. It might be too distracting. Maybe you pull the cart in a little bit and then just get some like cans and stuff on there. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see how you think about the lighting in here before, um, like figure out how your lighting is illuminating things. Like there's a little scene going on here. There's something up here that could be maybe like, I mean, I, I think it's all right that it's kind of dark up there, but it feels like there should be something here. And then all of the focus should be here, which I think would happen with these lights. And I don't know where the, are these going behind this? So you probably need to figure out like, it's like, hang on, let me. Aha, dude, I thought this was solid. Okay. So probably, um, man, there's so much stuff going on up here that I didn't see before. It's probably my screen though. Um, yeah, right now, if you look at the, the range, man, I don't, I don't know how to read this, uh, this right now <laughs> but remember the brightness of, of the light coming in and the brightness of the the lights themselves like these probably shouldn't get much brighter than than the sun but i don't know it could depend on like like this looks like the sun is starting to set so like some cooler lights in here and then these ones above being like warm almost white lighting yeah it just needs it the composition will be affected greatly by the way you decide to light this. So I think you'll probably want to get a pass on that before, before you go any further and then find references for anything and everything you're doing. Like this whole like upper area here feels very makeshift. And if that's the way, if that's the plan for what you want there, I would still find references showing a more makeshift design. But yeah, cool. Man, really, really interesting looking scene.
Okay, next up is Alex. Alex is looking at this scene. Let's see here. Also did the challenge. I feel like this is also like your sculpt was really, really well done. And it's more the material execution. That's the, the weak point. Um, let me go and grab your... So you can see like, oh man, dude, I would, if you can, I would go back and, and readjust your materials just because it's a great opportunity to like push. Hey, no problem, Fatal. Um, it's a great opportunity to push your PBR understanding. So these are visually, they kind of look like two different references, but I think they're the same. No? Yeah, they're the same. So what I really like about this piece, even though it's really pixelated in the in the image, is see how smooth this is versus like the elements here. And then there's this like buildup or caked like dirtiness between the two materials. Getting that in here would be really, let me see here. Right now, if you look at yours, like that doesn't feel very smooth. It's quite dark. And like the the interaction between these two, there's there's definitely like a balance issue going on with the with like the colors and the roughness and the types of details that you're you're pushing for. They're very like base base materials with um, some some grit added. Prop wise, it was executed quite well though. Like this is like look at that. It looks super nice. It just needs like that extra understanding of material. Like what is this material made out of? How does it like what builds up in the crevices of it? And why is it the color that it is? A bit dark in terms of PBR. It's in the, in the core of it. Like if we look at the, uh, these references, like this is pretty dark, but you see how smooth it is. So this could be quite reflective. And then like, oh man, I think I need these higher res in, really, in order to really like know how to kind of break this down. But the, the stuff that builds up in the types of metals and like the color that it gives will change depending on the metal type, right? And so like knowing what the PBR, like finding out what this material is and then matching it in your PBR like this feels really yellow. It doesn't feel like a gold-like material. Um, the buildup that you have going on in it, like up close looks pretty nice though. It just feels like with the, the kind of grittier looking surfaces, this feels more like stone than a metal, right? This like the noise that's on there. This feels nice. This area right here feels really good. But I think what's throwing me off is maybe the the roughness, the color of the aged surface in the inside, the color, and the um, the kind of micro noise that you're presenting. Like metal doesn't usually have these dots build up on the surface going outwards unless it's some type of a... Um, additive corrosion usually corrosion eats away right so when metals age and corrode they're being the holes are being eaten away inwards if that makes sense so the like pitting is what what you would call that um but there's a lot of information here that's telling me that it's sculpted stone that was painted yellow so those are the things i would be i would be looking at the chain feels Feels pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of like extra noise that's happening. So it's like being over processed, if you want to say it like that. Sometimes a patina can build up like that. But yeah, I agree. It doesn't work in this context. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine it just to be generally a lot smoother. Um, there's some, also some some edges that look like they might be bake issues. Like this this edge here looks really odd to me. Like I don't know if that's in there in, in the reference. Um,
Yeah, figuring out, like, I guess this is like a type of uh, stone that was glued into place. Figuring out how to get that to look look nice will be important. Um, let me see if the... You can see the surface here just doesn't really read like you would expect uh, with this one. And it's a, it's an awesome opportunity to have different types of roughness. Like this should be much smoother than the normal. And then the discoloring uh, around these guys and how it kind of goes further out. You can see that they're, those are quite dark here in the way that they've, they've kind of aged, the surface is aged. But in yours, it's very, um, it's very light. So there's some balancing issues going on as well with the, where the albedo and the roughness are at. Um, but yeah, I actually, the great thing about this piece, I will say though, is that you did a great job of sculpting it. The sculpted detail is extremely good. And the, um, the fact that you're finishing the, the challenges that you jump into or that you're like, I'm going to make this prop and you build it and then you complete it and you get the presentation in that to me is arguably more important than you like locking in everything perfectly. Right. So, now we can look at this and go, ah, this looks great. I'm able to see your full, your full start to finish process and then highlight the big macro issues that you can work on in the future uh, with your future assets. And I think this would be a great exercise for really understanding materials and just trying to get um, the materials to be really close to real life. Uh, if that's the goal, of course. But yeah, it's really cool. I love this shot. I think this one's actually, that one's actually my favorite of the whole render of all of your pieces. Really cool. Nice job as well. Um, yeah, let me know if you have other questions. Um, can try and try and highlight some, some uh, ways to answer it. Uh, Jasmine. So working on my, my late Sierra division prop, finishing the hair at the moment would, and we'll be able to, we'll do overall finishing touches on texturing after that should be finished by the end of the week. Would love to hear your, hear any areas of improvement. Dude. So this thing's kind of wild if I'm being honest. Um, Let me grab the other one here. No. Dude, it's pretty wild. So the hair looks really good. And the references, it's pretty wild as well. Um, let me copy this. This is not the concept now. So, so here's the, oh, whoops. I'm like, what the hell? Um, dude, it's crazy, man. So we grab this one and then this one. So what, what you'll notice if you get up close, detail normal. That's what'll that's what'll push the surface to get you this micro information. You you love to hear me say it, but that's exactly how you will get that that type of info. Um, the hair is really cool. I think in your version, it maybe needs. I mean, honestly, it's quite good. Your your roughness is pretty on point. Once you get a detail normal on there, you'll be able to know like how, man, we need to crisp up your, yours. Like, I don't know if it's like a, a resolution difference. Um, are you doing a sharpening on this after or like in post? 
It's a low res screenshot. I haven't scaled this. I haven't scaled these. I wonder why, did I scale this one? Last time your screenshots were huge. Generally, I think the hair is, is pretty good. Like, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm trying to figure out, um, I guess you had a job interview, didn't you? Or you had, you had some like life stuff you were, you were working on like work and, and whatnot to this hair is crazy. Cause like if you, this is, so to me, this would get with tests, dude, hardcore. I think this to me would get an honorable mention. If the surface, if you can nail the surface detail that you're getting here. Jazz, you gotta do it though. Like it's good that you're, I think that takes precedent over a challenge. I'll take that. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, but yeah, maybe the hair is a little too poofy. Like it's coming out a little too far. If it was brought in just a little bit, that could be closer to the reference. But maybe this is the look you're going for. I would try and see if you can get like a little bit of stringiness uh, that you manually place around the silhouette just to kind of get these like extra strands that are in the reference. And then it's really about like just getting that surface to read with the, the textural information that we're seeing here. Um, you can see here, this feels like you've got just the one material type, whereas here it's the material type. And then it's like, there's like crevices inside of it that are kind of like caked with detail. It's the same here. It doesn't really have the extra information that you see here, which you can like after the, you, you're done with the bake, right? Honorable mention from Jerry. <laughs> uh, you would at least get an honorable mention. I, I feel anyways. Um, but like these extra curves that are in here that aren't in your sculpt, you can do these in Substance Painter for sure. But getting that kind of extra textural uh, wear and tear in the material is going to be key because right now it feels really simple here. This actually feels like what it would look like if it was brand new, right? It, versus like if it was um, aged and has been around for a while. You can see as well like the roughness here is changing how dark it actually is. And you're getting a little bit of that. I think the the little damage points and like what's making it surface wise kind of busy is uh, far less in your reference. And so it's reading as like more bumpy. Like if you took the normal of that and just half the strength of it, that would probably go much closer to this. And it would, you can see the highlight that's here. You have a highlight here, but it's being broken up by all the, the normal changing, uh, like the vector changes in the normal. Toning those down is gonna have that breakup be far less, which will lead to it looking closer to this. Um, yeah. That's interesting. There's a little bit of um, loss here where like the the eyebrow comes up and then goes in like this. And then here the eyebrow comes up and then there's no room. So it almost feels like maybe there is some, some shape um, loss that you're, that's not translating over from the references. It's pretty minor though. It's just something I noticed. Um, yeah, I would say hair, normal information on the, the horns, I guess. This normal info I was talking about and the, uh, I think that's largely it. The, the detail and the, the way that the surfaces have aged and you're good to go. You're nodding at everything. <laughs> oh man, I do, it's okay, I do that too. <laughs> I do that too. Dude, where the heck's the other? Uh, 
That's the reference. I'm like, where? There we go. Dude. I'm like, what the hell? No. I'm still getting used to... It's painful. Oh. These are really high res. <laughs> I did the erase and it's like, uh... Are you sure? Are you sure about that? And you can see the nose is a little bit more narrow, but it could also be the, the lens. The Photoshop's gone. I have no Photoshop anymore. But we're getting there. No, I like this is how I switched to Blender as well. I just hard quit the other software. It's like the only way to learn it is to commit to it. This is Affinity, Affinity Photo. Uh, but you can see like just taking the nose and squishing it in a little bit would would work well with the way that everything's like proportioned. Um, you can see around the eye area, that, those eyes are popping out, man. So in the eye area, see, they're not really popping out, but there's also, there's, it's a bit red painted in there. And then there's like a dust buildup. So don't, don't lose these creviced areas. Like make sure they, they stick out. Cold Turkey, lol. Me too. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's not because like, I'm like irritated or anything, but that's how I, that's how I learn is to force muscle memory to, uh, adapt. Um, but yeah. The other thing too is I'm almost only using it during our stream. So I, I need to like make sure the eyes pop, make sure the eyes pop. Um, yeah, I'm only kind of like learning how to use it every time uh, we're, we're streaming and that's it. Seeing like, dude, what am I even? No. A race. <laughs> I'm like, why? A race brush E. And I'm like, why isn't that erasing? I don't understand. Is it because I'm erasing with white? I don't know. So there's some there's definitely some like trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Oh what? That's why. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Look it. Look, there's like, I can't erase that. <laughs> Anyways, pretty cool. This is very well done. It's very, very well done. It's like you did this to me, Jasmine. It was your fault. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, really, really well done. I look forward to you uh, finishing it. We'll put it that way. I look forward to this being complete because I think you're actually really close. Uh, let's let's go through some more. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, guy. Um, continue to be haunted. Wait, what? Why is this one? Oh, oh, I see. Duplicate images that were removed, maybe. It's too late, I grabbed them all. <laughs> Let me see here. So you have the prop. Okay, I'm just gonna grab these ones. And uh, no. Okay, hang, hang on, hang on. I'm, ha I'm having the best of luck right today. And then I think I closed, <laughs> I think I closed the wrong ones. No, I'm good. We're good. Yeah, it looks the same as Photoshop. It's substantially cheaper. Um, dude, this looks pretty sick, man. If we go through and just kind of, so you have your environment, you have the scene that you're building up. Man, the soldiers look quite good. 
everything's just a bit dark. And like the light that's coming through is very artificial feeling. It feels like a spotlight. So this one, hmm, I actually really like this one. I would definitely like doff this stuff back here out. Yeah, big glow up for sure. Let's see, let's see if we can get this in here. Wow, look at that wide, yo, let's go. It's gonna, do this and lock that bad boy. Cool. Okay. So I guess my, my question is like, from a compositional standpoint, I think getting all of this elements back here and just darkening them will, will go a long way. Uh, can I just dupe this? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> just gonna try to do some things. Uh, oh, right. That's a, hang on here. So these are, I'm going to run you through some stuff while I go through it. When you paste an image in, you'll see it says image here and you just want to make sure that you rasterize it so that it becomes pixels that you can edit. Uh, now I'm doing a levels adjustment on top, right? But that levels adjustment is affecting everything below it. So if I put it inside of this, now it's only affecting this little, little quirks to, uh, to learn about so you can see if you right now you're not using any of this range so by bringing that the white level in you're like oh it's it's definitely like kind of screwing with the let me see if we can you don't want to do a bit of gamma is nice just because you'll you'll fill the scene up a little bit more but then you have your black levels so let's let's do like output output white just want to see if we can, because if I can put a mask on here, which also you want to put in here, um, you're going to want to paint over here. Let's just bring this over. We'll go to our mask brushes and I'll just do it like this for speed. You can see just already how much that'll how much that'll help your your scene. Oh boy. I see what's wrong here. There we go. Um man, I keep using brush shortcuts from Dude is so wild. I don't know. But yeah, by getting those separated, maybe even blurring this a bit, that's going to help a lot with like readability of like what you want us to focus on. And see, by bringing up the the brightness, now you can get a little bit more focus on like the details here. Now, when I zoom in fully, what I'm seeing is actually this area is quite in focus. And this is pretty in focus. And here it gets blurry. I would try and get us to like, what do you want us to look at? actually right because that's 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 how we but like i want to look here but what do you want us to look at it feels like this should be in focus like you're, maybe your your range should be a little bit wider this should be less in focus than here just because of how lenses would work if this is in focus but um yeah something to keep in mind the Layout those is quite nice. Maybe the wood is a little light. Feels like you could have a little bit more aging or like darkening to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe not the top. I'm like, did, did flow even change anything? What's happening here? There we go. Yeah, so that way you get a little bit more light information going on here.
Yeah, I think the only other thing that's really sticking out to me is, uh, again, PBR understanding. Like, when it comes to the complexity, man, this is cool. These lights are, they feel like they're lighting weirdly. Like the light source is outside of the light, but also inside. Uh, don't worry about trying to show the prop. Um, just because lighting will, if you try to do that, the lighting will just look wrong. Um, yeah, when we look at this one, in this environment, you can see the materials pretty clearly. And the roughness is very strange on a lot of them. Or like the albedo feels very, like they're they're in different environments right now. That that makes Dolan, what's up? Like it feels like the 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 metallic materials are, are a bit too clean. Um, there's a separation of all of the different elements from each other. Like this feels a bit more polished than these materials. Like these don't feel grounded in the same environment. The the shininess of this, I can't really explain. It kind of looks like oil, but it's presented in a way that doesn't look like oil, maybe more like grease. And then I'm wondering like why it's not on the handle. So it's like really, I'm really trying to understand what this, what this means, like the, the surface information that you're giving us. Is this a, what is this? Is this a fuse? What is that thing? There's some hard edges here that maybe you should look at maybe beveling those. And then, yeah, it's really, it's like material understanding. Cause like the box looks pretty good. Like this, this type of stuff here, maybe some dust caked in there, some buildup in the crevices, but generally it feels good. And I really appreciate the directionality you have going on here. Um, there's quite a bit of detail throughout this piece. So it's, it is really good. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The environment as well, like, I feel like these are two separate pieces. I would try and like, I would maybe try and get this shot done and submit it and do breakdowns of these props. And then I would actually do another post and finish this and post that. You record my critiques. How dare you? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, that's, that's interesting. I'm sure you're not the only one that does that. Um, but yeah, I would actually submit these separately. Focus on the props. Get those like looking good. Build that little scene around it just for that render. Then build the presentation for the assets. Show the wireframes. You sell them the highest bidder. Nice. And then um, from there, you can submit that to ArtStation and then just start working on this scene. But yeah, I think that would be that'd be that'd be good. <laughs> fatal, fatal, that's funny, man. You know what's really interesting is so um, was it Twitch takes half of the sub, but the but Patreon I think takes like twenty uh, percent or something like that. I get much more of what you're trying to give me if you go through Patreon, and you get access to all of the vods. So. So you don't have to waste your time recording things and whatnot. Those are never going away, by the way. Why not both? I mean, you could you could double sub on Patreon with the second tier and it would be it'd be better than doing both. <laughs> like like Twitch, like they're getting the money largely. And then that gets whatever I get gets taxed. Oh man, mentorships. Yeah, I need to activate those again. I have a I have a few that are still running. Um but the big ones I need to open up again. Anyways, I would post these two scenes separately. I think that'll actually help you as well. Like you'll get more traffic to your portfolio, you'll be able to focus a little easier on s specific scenes. And uh yeah. Just my my uh suggestion, Rex. Okay, where are we at now? We got these. 
And then we had these, the references. Man, this is a cool, that was a good pick, Alex, for a piece to work on. This is, uh, I would go, I would go hardcore on this. I would go and look at your materials and really understand people. Like, if you can get this to look like the reference, you you got PBR in, on lock. Uh, okay, let's let's see what this is. Clay material scans. Cool. Oh, that's that's pretty rad, actually. So. Uh, looking for some feedback on my latest materials and how to improve in the future. I'm also concerned that my albedo contains light information, and I'm not sure whether I should remove it or not. Um, the purist will tell you to remove all of the lighting from your albedo. I think it, in the sense of like what you're, what you're using them for here. Dang, these are sick. What I'm noticing here is. I would go for, you could maybe make it a little bit more subtle, but like, what are these texture maps? You've got a normal, you've got your albedo. I guess this is height and this is roughness. Is that correct? Yeah, some albedo light, lighting is passable, but yeah, you gotta always lock in that lighting look. Lock in the lighting look if some exists. Your normal becomes less accurate with, yeah, with light information in there. It starts conflicting with it, which on a subconscious level starts messing with you. Um, man, this is really cool. So generally speaking, the, the presentation looks pretty good. And it's more about figuring out how to make it look good tiling on a surface, right? So this, uh, this texture map here, this is roughness, I assume, because you've got your albedo normal uh, height and roughness. So the roughness does not look like roughness at all. Like, I don't know, it, it kind of looks like if you were to spray the surface with like a chrome. So I would try and figure out uh, a roughness attribute that looks correct to the, like try and figure out what the roughness looks like on this clay smooth. Like if you flatten the, the clay down so that it's quite smooth, go in and look at it with like a light near it and just see how the surface reacts to that. Replicate that and that would be your, that would be your roughness. And then the, the rest of the information will just sort out how it reads uh, afterwards. Because I think that's probably the thing that's making it feel the strangest is your roughness. Would the roughness be essentially uniform? Essentially, yeah. Like if you were to squint, it would largely be uniform. But there is a good opportunity to add like the micro imperfections of like little particulates that are in the clay itself. Like it's not just one... Like if you look at clay really closely, it's probably looks a lot like a grain that just sticks together, right? Like a really fine sand. Um, if you look at it closely, those differences, those could probably be in the albedo as well. You could probably author your albedo and your roughness very similarly. And they don't need to rely on the scan because the scan is largely for the height map and the normal information that you want to get out of it. That being said, I mean, the result here looks pretty cool. And it's, it's more about the small, like, roughness detail and making sure that albedo doesn't conflict with your, your height and, and roughness. Small roughness range for 90% of it. But I would say the compacted clay where your fingers have dragged through it would be shinier than the rough. Oh, interesting. So where there's, like where your fingers have smoothed it out, the roughness would be a little bit different compared to like the, the scraped textural areas. Like this, these would be pretty smooth in the crevices only if it was smoother, right? So think about the smoothness affecting the, the, the roughness value, which 
What's the, what's the other name for roughness, uh, Bray? It's like uh, micro, micro surface. It's like micro, micro surface noise or micro. Micro surfaces, if you're thinking about fabrics, okay. Because I, I feel like it would apply to this as well. But yeah, you can see when you tile it over an object, it's it becomes strangely artificial. So you might want to find a way to make it so that like you can use a mask that's following form, like a curvature mask or a convex concave mask, to control like directionality of the the form. So that way, it kind of looks like it was sculpted around the form as it was being created, even though you're using a tileable. Otherwise, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's really interesting um, surface to um, to scan. You probably want to be scanning it in different forms where it's like, this is like when it's mostly refined surfaces and then like f less refined. Like the less refined will probably be down here and like up here it's it's a little bit more controlled. And then you're just looking at like, trying to find ways to isolate these, these bands that are happening with the tiling and, and remove those. Really cool. Interesting uh, scan idea. All right, second personal project from uh, Miami. We'll love some feedback on my second personal project from school. Like right off the bat, feels really cool. Quite interesting. Do I love how like off kilter everything is? Heck dot yeah. <laughs> Why is that a link? Because the dot and they're connected. It's heck dot yeah. So it's like a website. Fix it. You fixed it. So that's interesting. There's a bit of snow here. Um, let's see here. So there's, there's a lot happening here. Um, oh, that's cool. I like when people are making these videos of showing like how they were stuff they'd set up. Whoa, let's go, dude, let's go. So you've got some, some pretty interesting materials. There's a bit of a, how do you describe it? So the snow doesn't look like it's tiling. This doesn't look like it's tiling either, but that might just be the mesh. Might be the mesh that you're presenting these on. There's a concept art in the caption. Oh yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So what's happening in the, first of all, nice job. Like this feels, um, it feels pretty close tonally. Uh, let's, let's copy this. Let's uh, get this over here. This is how I get better at this program, man. I just not, need to, like, fight it. Time to fight, man. We're going to fight this. Um, where are we at here? I'm going to go up, and I'm going to grab your, your main render here. Come on, hide the... There we go. I'm just going to screenshot it. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty, uh, that's crazy. And maybe we can bring it down like this. There we go. Cheap viewers. Oh my God. Thank God.
So cheap. Mod. <laughs> I've been paying a premium for viewers for years. I wonder if that person knows that everyone in chat's a bot. <laughs> Have you seen how big the empire is? You think those people are real? <laughs> We're all bots. Join us, brother. <laughs> uh, okay, so we look at this this image. So there's some shape language stuff that's going on that's throwing me off a little bit. And then there's some tonal stuff happening. So overall, when you when you just like quick look, pretty accurate to the concept. So very, very well done. Roughness values, definitely. That, that can help with the, like the snow. I feel like the, the snow is maybe not um, like you've got the broken up language going on a little bit over here, but I think if you were to, to break it up a little bit here as well um, in the same way, you can see how like this is all micro that would have helped a lot more. I think uh, there's some trees that are here that kind of confuse me on the size of the space where you don't see those trees here. Um, and then the shape language of the trees, like these, these largely go straight up and yours are kind of like leaning and having those match a little bit more would, would be uh, stronger, I think. Um, and then the color adjustments are like, I feel like there's maybe not enough. This, the red is maybe too high and the yellow could be increased. So you can see like the, the, the color difference here. So if we go and like, I just like, I'm just going to grab this and paste. You can see like the, man, there's some, there's some nice stuff going on here. It's just like trying to get this to be a little bit closer. You can see how much more like reddish this is by comparison. Yeah, it's really interesting. I I think that like there's there's some stuff that's happening when it comes to like this edge here and like this edge that you just don't really notice in the concept. Like they're quite it's quite a soft shape. The light temperature a bit. Yeah, I think the temperature itself would cuz like this seems like a little little more red as well by comparison. Um I wonder if I can, if I just do this and I go, and I just go to the red. Oh, right. <laughs> I forgot I'm going to affect everything. Um, I'm just going to put this above. Oh man, there's so much more. What? Hang on here. I'm like what? Cool. Okay. So if I bring this outside here, we'll go to the red. Maybe let's see if yeah, so it's like removing a little bit of the red, maybe bringing in some, man, I, I wonder if you can colors. White balance vignetting. I wonder if I can do like, okay, hang on here. Let's delete that. I'm gonna just hide this and go. This this part is kind of strange to me. So you can go to develop as a as a persona. Oh right, this needs to be RGB values. Okay, let me. You can see like this isn't <laughs> this isn't a RGB value because it's a because it's a image. So I need to right click this and rasterize it. Now it's now it's pixels. <laughs> and now I can go and develop. So I don't know if it's going to it's probably going to affect the Oh, actually it won't. Oh my god. Okay, hang on. Hold. Hold. 
Okay, we're going back to this one. Cool. Okay, personas, develop. So what we're looking for is like maybe we can shift the temperature. See, it's like it's almost going cooler. I wonder if tinting, oh, yeah, it's kind of the tinting would do it. And then if you cool it off a little, you see a little bit of red in the in the snow. Hell yeah. But you see it's getting closer, right? It's a that's a difficult one to to push for. But you did a really good job of like getting the how would you say it? The I'll just hit develop on that. Getting the the background to feel a lot lighter. Like you can see it's even more than than yours but man you you did a really good job of like just kind of building the scene out i think it's more of the execution of just the general like breakup of like i would bring in little chunks of snow all over the place and like the crevices and whatnot the the little bits of like like these are textured in a way in the concept where they're quite solid i think in in yours they kind of like stick out more than than you would intend for them to. Maybe they just need to be a a bit darker. Like if we grab this area, man, you can feel me struggling with this software <laughs> as I learn it. But you can see like the the value difference between these. Man, you could really benefit from modeling one of these birds too. Oh, that'd be so cool. Is it okay to say that you like theirs more than the concept? Yeah, I mean, if it it can resonate more with you. The other one can still be good, but one uh, calls to you a little bit more. There are cheap birds in the UE marketplace. And then I guess you'd retexture them. But yeah. You can see here too how, how dark it gets in here. There's one thing I've noticed. There isn't really uh, any prominent shadows. It's very overcasty, isn't it? I wonder if I can. Oh man, that's that's not bad. It's like almost feels like it's doing better than the. They're like ten dollars with rig and behavior. What? Really? Dude, crazy. Can I just put this here? Yeah, cool. So this is like I'm doing that and then maybe like I need to like look at the saturation a little bit, but this is something where if you could get a little bit more in the space, like that would help a lot, I think. I don't know if that's like too strong, but just generally Like you, this is the thing I think is missing is you're missing just those those slightly darker pixels. Can you find me sheeps and chicken for my scene? Dude, that sounds awesome actually. I am a sheep and a chicken. <laughs> I hope to see renders of your scene, Angelina, with uh Fatal just standing in your in your 3D scene with grass in his mouth. <laughs> with his arms up like a chicken. <laughs> oh man, that's super cool. Oh, Rex, you linked your uh your prop as well, huh? So generally 
very strong. I, I think the, the materials back here and the concept, I think your material struggles a little bit with like achieving that, that look and feeling, but it is, it is its own as well. So it works. I would say it just doesn't feel the same as this. The, the way I would also achieve this gradient is maybe like you create a grayscale of this and then use a gradient map in Unreal to use, uh, to gradient the change of color over, over time from like height. Uh, cool. Okay. What are we, what are we looking at here, Rex? You sent this as well. Yeah, I think you need an environment around the the ground. I think that would help a lot. Just it doesn't need to be textures or anything like that, but just like just something that it's on. Maybe the shadows not as sharp. Like use like a directional light and like start softening the the shadows a little bit. But I think it really is it's coming down to the materials on the inside here. Like these are hard to um, ignore. You're like, what are these? What's this material? It's like extremely reflective. Your two biggest struggles are snow and lighting. Dude, snow is not, not easy. You could talk to uh, uh, Poodle Scene in Discord about snow. Okay, let's uh let's keep clicking through here. So Jolin. Look at that. This looks pretty cool. So the edges on the the twine, like everything or the twine, the the leather like bands feels a little feels a little sharp. This is cool. This attention to detail is really nice. I think it's a roughness and then the shadows are really dark. So it doesn't really feel, uh, something is not natural about this. Like it feels like a game render because of the, because of how dark they, these shadows are get some ambient in there and that'll help a lot. Um, this looks great. I love that you're, you're pushing this type of detail. It's like cut in even into the geometry. Generally, this looks pretty nice. It's quite, let me, let me go like this. So in here, quite a bit of, it's quite noisy in the, in the material. I think the noise is good, but maybe the contrast between the noise and the color of the leather is maybe a bit strong. Uh, if you just take that noise and, and bring it, bring the value down a little bit, it'll probably feel more natural. And that's, that's more of like a, it's probably more of a personal taste than anything. The wood feels quite good. Um, I think my biggest nitpicks with it. Oh man, look at that albedo. So there's some interesting normal information happening there. What is that? See that warping that's occurring there? You probably needed to add a hard edge there and then split the UVs and, and weight it. Or like split the UVs there. That way the normal will distort less to support the geo. But I mean, the bake seems to be going all right. I'll, this is, this is probably okay. It's a bit of gray value in there, but I think it's, I think it's fine. If you're trying to get the dirty look, you're, you really want to do it in your, I'll be in your uh, roughness. I think the roughness that you have set up here is very consistent throughout the material through all the different materials. So like there's probably something you can do with just like taking the wood material and bringing it down in value or up in value just to separate it from the leather a little bit more. Um, that's why I'm not saying anything. You just said something, Julian. Um, I think the... 
I think it's just these leather elements, and then the the blade feels like the the axe itself. Like it, this looks pretty nice here, but it generally feels really soft. I think this feels like it needs to be a little bit sharper, if that makes sense. Like you can see there's a little bit of a, like a chiseled effect going on there, which is probably to like push that sharpness. Um, but it still feels really soft. Like, like for metal, it doesn't, it actually feels not very, um, it feels more malleable than you would expect it to be. How could I get a sharper look? So it's, it's primarily the edges, like, so the edge here, maybe emphasizing how sharp this edge is with like, looking at like, um, how older blades, how they're sharpened, you'll get some like lines in there that kind of show like the, the, the scraping to get it to be sharper. But then also like even up here, you can see how soft it is in the sculpt. Just getting those edges to be a little bit sharper in the sculpt would, would probably do it. Right now it feels really soft, if that makes sense. And maybe, I mean, maybe that's the look because it's older, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's got that. But that's being pretty critical. Yeah, seeing your reference, it's pretty soft as well. You see how in, in this in this little like paint over, you can see how prominent that edge is. I think if that was there and then this edge was a little bit more prominent, that would be enough. That'd be more than enough. And then the rest can be more soft like this. Hmm. Overall though, it's very well executed. Like if we go, if we go to your portfolio real quick, just to kind of highlight it, this is probably the the strongest thing you've you've built so far. Now it's like for overall execution of the content. So nice job. The guitar has also also always been cool, but I really um, this is good. You did good. You did good. Uh, Tomo, good old. Tom Gambo. Let's take a let's take a peek. Dude, look at the look at the surfaces on this. Dude, there's some roughness differences going on here that are very pleasant to the eye. It's like a nice grain going on here. Hey, no problem, Jolin. These are nice and soft. Have like a nice little dip in the in the button there's like some dirtiness to the i know that that surface man let me see here twin peaks bro bro yeah, that's some nice some nice roughness going on here the change do is wrong Americano, steamed milk, 478. Maybe this is a 10th cup they're getting free. Maybe. I love this attention to detail, though. Austin, Texas. Tom, are you in Austin, Texas? Oh, look at that wire. Was just in Austin, actually. Oh, did you get a, uh, a Americano with uh, steamed milk for free? Dude, it even says 478 here. Just visiting. <laughs> Pre nanite wireframe. <laughs> I got a lot of cold brew. Dude, cold brew is where it's at, man. So for me, this isn't game ready, but maybe this is more like. Um, just because of the, the amount of geometry on the keys. You can feel the keys for sure. I think you can, you can pull off these keys without having to like have this much geo. Um, that being said, this is the type of fidelity you'd probably see at like mid distance in a, in a cutscene. Yeah. 
a cutscene that's that's in game. Uh, if you get really close to it, then that would be there would be even more geometry. Like this would probably have more bevels and and whatnot. Yeah, in a VR game, maybe I think you would still like really tone down the the extra loops in here. You still want to get that dip in the in the key, but to get that fidelity, you probably just would bake the normal out for it. Although I know in VR normals don't really work all that well, so. What is, is this a, this is a quad here. Dude, look at this wildness going on here. Overall, it looks pretty solid though. It has just enough geometry on the rest of the details to sell it. And you don't really notice the edges. And that's exactly, that's what you want, right? Yeah, there's, there's definitely some geo in those keys that you don't need. I really like the presentation. Nice, uh, nice map layout here. Dude, look at that normal. That's a good normal, man. So the reason I'm like, ooh, that normal is because a lot of the elements are quite flat, right? And when you look at the normal here, it they're, they're also quite flat. So there's not a lot of like baking issues happening that are causing the normal to like skew or cause gradients. Um, Roughness looks real nice. I guess this is the only thing that's kind of weird is the underside. There's like some weird triangulation thing going on there. You don't see it in the normal. Interesting. The grime and wear looks a bit uniform. In here it does, but I, I think... Um, I think seeing it in context of like how it's how it's being utilized is what changes the the understanding of it cuz like the keys are different from the like are the keys in the the keys are in here interesting you can see them all in huh those are what is going on with your keys? Is this text separate? It feels like the text is separate on your keys. Particularly the parts where the employee never cleans. It, it almost felt like the the text that's on the keys is its own like texture or like their decals or something just because like it's, it's really hard to see them in the reference, but I think they're all there. They're like all in this little, in these little areas. I think they're all there. Yeah. There's some, there's some weirdness where I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Yeah. They're all there. Dude. It's wild. So that must be a pretty high res uh, texture then, I guess, right? I like how you, you said the try count, but you didn't tell us how high res the texture is. <laughs> it's like, you don't, you don't need to know that's a 4K texture. It's fine. Is it intentionally italicized? Looks a bit strange. <laughs> it's like, you don't, you don't need to know. It's like four or eight Ks, like it's fine. Um, yeah, it's AK, 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 AK. That's, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> italicize the text. Uh, I mean, I don't think that's that weird. The text does feel a little large, but I mean, I think the reference will tell you. Oh man, that's that's really interesting. You, the amount of research that goes into understanding this stuff is kind of wild. So, Jolin, I challenge you. So, I'm not going to critique your house because it it's so subtly changed right now that I want you to finish it first and then we're going to we can feedback on it. It's time to finish it.
Yes, sir. It's time to finish it. No, I believe in you. It's very close to done. Tricky, Jeremy. Radham, dude, this is kind of crazy. Uh, trying to figure out the framing. Would love some feedback. The white block out uh, on the left is railings. Oh, this this here. I mean, the ceiling looks really cool. The window, like the stained glass looks really cool. Who was it? Someone was looking into stained glass in the server. Who was it? Someone was looking into stained glass and they got it working with Lumen. Twas me? Didn't you get it working with Lumen Polysox? Or you got it, you were doing something crazy with it. Got to write that up and show people. Hell yeah, man. Radham would, would love to know, I'm sure. Because you can get all this color coming in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, man. How exciting. You've been doing a lot of overtime lately. Oh, man. Make sure to take care of yourself. So... Generally, this is pretty good. I like the characters that are here. It feels like they're all static, right? You want to get it looking like they're in motion. It's so like mid-step or, or whatnot. That would help a lot. Um, oh, man, I'm sleepy. That nap wasn't enough. Uh I think if you can make the light coming from the windows feel like the light that's lighting the space, that's going to do a lot. Like right now, it's kind of hard to pick up on it. But if the brightness was a little bit more and you get those colors in, it's really going to feel natural how this is being illuminated. Um, I don't know if there's supposed to be anything else in these types of hallways. Like you've got the railing here and it looks like some steps here. Since these are so close to the camera, you're going to want to make sure that they're, the edges are a, a bit softer, uh, of course. But I think you know that. Um, yeah, you're going to want... I wonder if I can... Let me see here. Let me see here. What is going on? There we go. Okay, so if we take this image, it's gonna duplicate it. Oh, that that's actually kind of faster than rasterize. What the heck does rasterize and trim mean? All right. <laughs> um, like those. Those windows are really going to boost some stuff up, you know? It's almost more like, like that than anything. We'll put this inside of here, and then we'll put a mask on top. Oh, can I? Oh, I can just select it. I don't have to open. Okay, and that's, I'll take it. I'll take it. Nice. We'll, uh, can we invert that? Yeah, yes, we can. Um, okay. And then cool. Yeah. Getting those windows to really feel like the, the source of the light is going to do a ton. Um, you can see it. Like if I, if I highlight the floor here like this, maybe illuminate the wall here. And then we really like tone it down as it gets closer to the window. You can start to fake the, the amount of light coming in and really illuminate the space in that way. Like this upper area here will probably be the darkest area of the hallway. But yeah, it's, it takes some tweaking for sure.
And then you can see how much that'll help your the shape and form of the the core here, because this can now be a little bit darker. Jaren Dodge Tool, name a more iconic duo. <laughs> Dude, you can push it and it'll it'll look pretty pretty sick, I think. And those colors coming through, bro. Bro. Dude. Dude. Yeah, you'll do that for sure. Sick, man. Is, does the, I'm going to call him the main man. Does the main man, uh, does he actually carry the cross like that? That zoom. <laughs> does he carry the cross like that? You call him a main Gavin? <laughs> That's interesting. Dude, that cross... Make sure. I, I, I need to understand like, okay, make sure that there's like a nice highlight on the edges of this getting illuminated by the light from outside. All of them are Gavin's. Gavin one, Gavin two, Gavin three. Gavin's got a hole, sir. <laughs> Gavin's got a hole. Dude, that's so funny. These look awesome. Did you find a, a reference for these? And you just like add them in? Like directly? I'd be curious to see a breakdown of how you've got that all set up uh, when you get there. Oh, you got a coat of arms here too? There's like a shield or something on the wall? You made them? What? Where? Where can we see that? What do you mean you made them? It's with splines and substance designer. It was an overkill. <laughs> I really regret it now. Oh my god. No nah, man, you just need a you just need a nice close up panning down the hall, looking at them. Let the light do all the work, really show it off. Make this like a a 2K texture. Time for bragging. Yeah, there's no regrets. Just make sure. The only regret is if you don't render it and show us. That's the only regret you should have. Show off, show off how hard you worked on something. People will look at that and be like, dang, dude, you'll get likes and follows just because people are like, yo, that, that's serious. Like that person, like, crazy. You know what I mean? Like, dude, 100%, 100%. Every time I get bigger, I have to like pay for it by making my camera just a little bit smaller. <laughs> dude, yo, yo. Majors, he was just waiting. He had his finger on the on the button. Uh, that was that was the last piece. Do we do do you guys want to look at anything else? Do you want to talk about anything? Do you have questions about stuff? Dude, I'm listening to some. This is a good song. Maru, you want Maru? Making clouds is painful. Dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. There's a... Isn't there a, a... Fatal... I don't think I'm allowed to do that. Because I'm directly benefiting. You know what I mean? Uh, What was I going to... 
I'll go into Unreal Engine really fast. I'm hearing a maybe. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Just for us, tell us the one trick to make good environments, but don't tell anyone else. The one trick to make good environments. Spend 10,000 hours on it. Dude, I wonder how much time I spent on my temple scene. Ask chat GPT. <laughs> Passion fruit minus the fruit. Detail normals, roughness variation and detail normals. Yes. Yes. Oh, what? Okay. Apparently Unreal's updating. What's, what's, what's that about? Vertex paint. Um, I mean, number one thing. Number one thing, references. Don't tell anyone I told you that. Number one thing, those references, for sure. Anytime anything has ever looked strange, it's because it doesn't have any grounded reference. That's what makes stuff like... Like even Dune... Even Dune has amazing reference because like while it's made, like there's things that are made up, it's so grounded with other references. Uh, Poly socks. Uh, what's your, when you're, when you're under a deadline and you have to cut things, what is the first, what is the first to go? That's a really good question, man. What is the first to go? Honestly, cuts usually are deeper. Like let's say let's say you're um how do how do I word this? Like if you were to look at um like say you how would I Hang on, I'm, I'm processing this. So let's say you had a, a game and it was narrative driven, right? And it's story, it's story related, or like you had missions you had to do. Like if we were making division or something and we had like, you had like, um, I don't know, 12 main missions and the, the story arc works for that. And maybe like one or two of them are just not, uh, they're not going to meet the deadline. You can just see it on the wall when you look at like um, planning in, in the Jira board, Jira, Jiraverse. So you can see like estimate wise, like there's just, we're struggling to get this thing done and it's just not, it's not fitting. Um, you look at it from a narrative perspective and then you try and figure out how to patch the narrative and then you could just pull that, pull one of those missions out, just completely cut it. That's like, that's one way to do it. Um, there's like, you can think about, you, you block out a space, you build all the visuals for it. And then there's the polish and then the micro detail. If you're running out of time, cut the micro detail. Like for sure it makes it look good, but it doesn't affect the gameplay. And if you could be doing micro detail or bug fixing and the bug fixing is making the playable experience better, you should probably focus on the, the bug fixing if you're short on time. Right? That makes sense. That should just be a more like logical way of thinking about it. At the end of the day, the game needs to be fun. Does that answer your question, PolySox? Man, I just, PolySox, I always imagine like polygonal socks. So ChatGPT says, Creating the best video game environment art involves a combination of technical skill, artistic talent, and a deep understanding of game design principles. <laughs> the number one trick, however, 
can be summarized as attention to detail and storytelling. Then it goes on a whole lo- a whole list of details. <laughs> Game design is what everything comes down to. Yes. It's why Minecraft is good. Like, you don't need the the visuals. Like, they were able to get the visuals consistent. And I'm not saying the, the art in Minecraft is bad. Like, it looks awesome. But the amount of effort needed to pull that off versus, like, a huge AAA crazy game is very different, right? Man, Unreal is really patching now. There's a uh, where I'm not opening it up, but uh, I learned that in Unreal they added a spherical uh, localized fog object that you can just place like a like you know when you go and you add, and then you can go and add like a cube or a sphere. There's just if you type in fog, there's this fog sphere thing, and it's got some kind of general exposed properties. If you need to just place a sphere a fog, you can soften or really sharpen the edge and like change how much it's, it's opaque and whatnot. I didn't know that existed. But yeah, a game is only as good as it, uh, as you can play it. It's been in since 5.2. Yeah. I never knew that was there, man. I've just, I've been looking into a lot of fog stuff lately. Oh, we're dropping frames like crazy now. Can I, is it unreal? Did we quit dropping frames? It was unreal, I think. I had to kill it mid install. I think we're okay now. When we drop like 2,900 frames. Wild. 0.7%. Yeah, it's useful. Really going to call me out when I have collision mesh to do's in my Jira? <laughs> uh, it depends. Is the player getting caught on it, PolySox? You're like, yo... I'm trying to run around and I just, all these rocks, they keep stopping me. It's like, poly socks. It, what's going on with your collision there, man? Screen space fog scattering, pretty sick. Skill issues. Dude, you can use, um, you can build a fog material that looks at distance fields so that the fog can collect around the objects. So the fog will be more visible around objects and less visible uh, away from objects. I'm like, what? Makes sense. I just have never, I've never built something like that. I've never tried that skill issue. <laughs> just jump everywhere. If you just jump, you'll just jump over the rocks. It's fine. Walkable slope override. Interesting. No idea. I know that. So once once the scene that we're working on uh, is done, which if you guys haven't seen that, maybe I can show you that. Where is that at? Um, I did a render recently. But once that's done, dude, I'm going to start exploring playable experiences on stream, which should be really... Uh, I think it should be really fun, actually. It's going to be a bit painful at first. Oh, where the heck did I save the, the render? Oh my god, I don't know where I saved the freaking render. That's hilarious. Render test? There it is. can do this no if I if I turn this music off and we where is it at here if I play this 
Like, where is that sound coming from? Is it? It's not browser. Oh, I don't have this sound exposed for you guys. Oh my god. But this is this is kind of where we're at um, with the. Just do like that, like there. So exposure's doing pretty well now, I think. I feel like the rocks maybe still be a, a like everything might be a little too bright still. We're also getting a little bit of popping of reflections where like an you'll see it here, like objects aren't in the reflection and all of a sudden they show up or they fade in. A little bit of popping there. Um, these trees feel a little dark still. And then I need to figure out how to either increase the frame rate of the leaves or let them be slow-mo like that. Also extremely dark now, so I need to tune that. But this is one of the shots for the, the video that I'm building. And I just need to cut it in a way where it like, I need to cut it in a way where uh, you can switch between that shot and the other, the other shots. Because the close-ups are gonna be really cool. Yeah, because right now that video is extremely long. The idea is to record that entire thing and then chop it up and keep going back to it and switching between shots as we go. Actually, dude, I'm excited. It's like very close. Very close. Uh, let's see here. Doesn't the holes on the left and right distract eyes a bit? They do for me at least. Uh, we'll have to see once the edits are, once I've got all the shots chopped up. There's no monkeys jumping around the trees. Too bad, Jer. <laughs> That's a, uh, I love it. in the end where you see the water through them. Oh, I see. You're talking about these. I think cause you don't really understand why it's there. Like if there was an arch, if it was more arch shaped, you would understand that, oh, you go under that. I see what you mean. Yeah, it might, I mean, it might be worth the change. Yeah. Dang, good one. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. See everyone Sunday for the bird rig stream? Get out. <laughs> get out of here. Do the next project, I dude, I don't even, we're probably going to initially try and figure out how to make a pixel art character move around in 3D space. That's probably the first goal. All right, guys, have a good evening. Thank you for hanging out. I will see you guys on Sunday. We can do a Crimson Raid, Crimson Streaming. Let's freaking go. We'll raid him for sure. From zone. Where are you at, Crimson? Come on. Come on. He's been streaming for 41 minutes. He's going to be streaming for a bit. He looks like he's animating. Let's uh, let's do this. Raid incoming. All right, gentle peeps. Have a good evening. We'll see you in the Discord. Bye, guys.